What really happened to the ocean's greatest predator? Roughly 3.6 million years ago, the seas grew quieter. A shadow vanished, the megalodon, once the largest shark to ever swim Earth's oceans, simply disappeared. But what if it hadn't? What if that ancient titan, stretching over 50 feet long with jaws strong enough to crush a small car, still patrolled the deep? The oceans today might look, and sound, very different. Schools of whales might migrate under cover of night. Great white sharks might flee the very waters they now rule. Because the megalodon wasn't just big. It was an apex disruptor, a creature so powerful that its extinction reshaped entire ecosystems. But what if that extinction never happened? What would the world's oceans look like today? Could humanity even share the seas with such a predator? To imagine this alternate ocean, we have to rewind time. The megalodon thrived during the Miocene and Pliocene epochs. Eras of warm seas, teeming with baleen whales and marine mammals. These were its prey. But today's oceans have changed. Global temperatures have cooled, coastlines shifted, and food chains evolved. Blue whales, the largest animals on Earth, are surprisingly gentle giants. In a world where megalodon still hunted, such giants might have never grown so bold, or so big. Whales would travel in tighter pods, perhaps never surfacing near shores. Their calls, which now echo peacefully through the deep, might be shorter, sharper, laced with fear. A predator like megalodon wouldn't just alter its prey. It would ripple through coral reefs, kelp forests, and coastal nurseries, changing the balance of ocean life itself. But there's a twist. Megalodon's size was its strength, and its weakness. Giants burn through energy fast. And after the Pliocene, ocean currents changed. Nutrient-rich upwellings shifted. Cooler waters favored smaller, faster, more adaptable predators. Orcas, once mere underdogs, rose in intelligence and coordination. And humans. We entered the scene with ships, sonar, and nets. Even if the megalodon had survived extinction, its world was vanishing. Could such a titan adapt? Or would its continued existence have pushed other species, maybe even us, to evolve differently? Perhaps the real mystery isn't how the megalodon died. But whether Earth ever had room for such a creature to live in the long run. Why did megalodon go extinct? The survival of a giant is never without consequences. If megalodon had defied extinction, it wouldn't have merely lingered, it would have ruled. But dominance on such a scale comes at a cost, not just for prey, but for the oceans themselves. A predator that feeds on whales must consume thousands of pounds of flesh each week. That means more kills, more fear, and far fewer great migrations. Entire populations of baleen whales, already slow to reproduce, might have dwindled under constant pressure. Calving grounds would be cloaked in silence. The ocean's long-distance travelers would have been forced into secrecy, hugging deeper waters or hiding in remote, nutrient-poor regions. The result? A quieter sea, but not a healthier one. Without whales surfacing to stir plankton, without their nutrient-rich fecal plumes to fertilize the sea, the very rhythms of life in open waters might have unraveled. And the damage wouldn't stop with the whales. The megalodon's presence at the top would have distorted the entire marine food web. Apex predators regulate balance, but only up to a point. With megalodon in charge, smaller predators like great whites and orcas might never have become what they are today. Their intelligence, social strategies, and wide hunting ranges likely evolved to fill the vacuum left behind. But in a world where megalodon stayed, those evolutionary pressures would have been muted, or redirected. Orcas may have remained coastal, less social, more cautious. Great whites might have stayed small, lurking on the fringes of megalodon's reign, never mastering open ocean territories. In short, evolution would have been stifled, not accelerated. Nature does not grow where it is crushed. Even ecosystems far removed from megalodon's direct path would have felt the ripples. Coral reefs depend on fish populations shaped by predator-prey dynamics. Kelp forests rely on a balance of herbivores and carnivores. Remove too many grazers, and algae blooms. Remove too many predators, and grazers explode. But with megalodon destabilizing mid-tier predators, chaos could spread. And yet, this was no monster. The megalodon, like any species, simply followed its nature. Its extinction may have allowed balance to return, but that balance came at the price of losing one of evolution's most extraordinary creations. So we're left with a difficult truth, survival of the fittest can come at the cost of the many. But extinction, even of giants, can sometimes be nature's way of restoring harmony. In imagining a world where the megalodon endured, we uncover an ocean ruled by fear, slowed migrations, and stalled evolution. A sea with a living relic at its center. Majestic, but unyielding. And while the idea of such a titan surviving into the present is thrilling, it also forces us to ask, is there such a thing as too dominant? Maybe the real story here isn't just what the megalodon was, but what it prevented the ocean from becoming.